So yeah, 2016 was kind of a fucking shit year for a lot of people. I mean, hell, just culturally speaking, we're talking, like, I mean, so many fucking dead celebrities. Um, fucking the worst presidential election that I've been alive for. Uh, probably the worst president that I'll have in my lifetime was elected. So yeah, fucking horrible. A, a gorilla got shot and people whipped their dicks out because of it. Um, I didn't really pay attention to that one, nor did I really give a shit. But apparently it's something that kept happening, so whatever. Uh, and, you know, just not even just culturally, but I mean, if you just look at it, like, you know, like, like individually, I'm sure a lot of people had their own bad fucking moments from this year. I personally had a lot of stress and anxieties and fucking depression and shit. Just, it was an up and down year for me. Um, not, not, not really, like, a good one overall. And, but, you know, there, there are positives. You know, there were also positives of this year. Like, um, this year, I went to Tampa, got to meet Geekdom and Megan and fucking, uh, uh, uh fucking Mr. Fusion, uh, Black and Fist, Quaman, all those guys. I got to meet all of them in person for the first time. That was a blast. That was a great time. Hope I'll get to, like, see a lot of these guys again. Honestly, I'd like to hang out with all of them again at some point in the future. Hopefully that isn't a one-time thing. We'll get to do that again sometime in the future. But, um, you know, like, it, it was just, it was just, you know, a great fucking experience. And definitely, a, like, a memory that I'm going to keep with me. And, you know, that I'm always going to look back on pretty positively. Like I said, hopefully I'll get to do something like that with those guys again. Uh, what else happened? Oh, yeah, YouTube. Like I said, like, YouTube was a lot of shitty things with YouTube this year. Uh, and then personally, like, this was, like, the year that I kind of... I, I had a huge spike in subscribers. I went from, like, like under 5K subscribers at the beginning of this year to over 11K. Uh, really, that has to all do with that fucking uh, animation comparison video I did. That got me a lot of attention. A lot of other videos I did got me some attention as well. But that one was the big one that everyone gave a shit about. And I, I wish I had known that video was going to be so big because I would have structured it differently because that video was really made for my pre-established audience and kind of like to contextualize things for people it wasn't exactly something that was meant for mass consumption. So if I had known it was going to blow up like that, I would have structured that video differently because there's so many people who are like, oh, why are you talking about all this shit at the beginning of the video? It's like, because I need to con contextualize. Also, I probably would have framed things differently also in that video. But whatever. Made me, made me a good chunk of money. Got me a lot of subs. And then those new subs are giving me plenty of views and more money. So, you know, that's nice. I'm not going to complain about that at the very least. Um, you know, <clears throat> this is also like the year where I became really, really dissatisfied with the work I've been producing. And hopefully 2017 will be the year that I really fix that and make more interesting content that I'm more passionate about and I really give a damn about. So, come on, 2017. Hopefully I don't fuck it up this year. Well, come on, just I, I need I need a good year, goddamn it, because 2015 blew too. So I need a good year for fuck's sake. Uh, so yeah, so yeah, I thought I'd just go over some of the um, like some stuff from 2016. Mostly just a lot of entertainment stuff, things that I was watching, things that I liked, things that I was participating in, and just talk about all that jazz. And I guess I'm going to start, you know, because a lot of people ask me, like, what do you watch? What do you play? What do you, blah, blah, blah. well, here I'm going to answer all of it. This is all the shit that I did in 2016. Shows. Uh, this was the year that I dropped all of my fucking DC CW shows. Like, the, I, really, the, D, the CW shows on, D, uh, the DC CW shows are the only shows that I watch on CW and from DC. But I dropped all of those. Uh, Arrow, Flash, Legend of Tomorrow. Didn't even get the chance to even give a shit about Supergirl, because CW took all their shows off of Hulu and put it on their own little private uh, streaming service that sucks balls, and I don't want to sit through ads, so I'm not going to support it. Maybe if it gets put on Netflix, then I'll pick those shows back up, but until then, uh, fuck them, fuck their practices, and put it back on Hulu. You lost at least one viewer with that shit. <coughs> I hope you lost more because of it. Uh, let's see. Uh, on, uh, as far as, you know, like, not necessarily TV, uh, or on the Marvel side of things, we got Daredevil Season 2, which was okay. If you saw my review of that, you know what I thought. It was okay. Um, Luke Cage, 
it was okay. It was it was serviceable. It it was kind of the worst Marvel show I've seen so far. And yes, I'm including Shield in that statement. But it wasn't. But like, it still has potential for better things. Hopefully, the later seasons will pick up and make it better. <clears throat> uh, Shield season three, pretty solid. Not as good as season two. Season four, oh man, oh man. They got a fucking Ghost Rider. They got all this paranormal shit going on. I am down, son. I can't wait to see how the rest of this season goes. I really, really am looking forward to seeing the rest of it. Fucking loving the fact that they got Ghost Rider involved in this. Um, I, like, I like the fact that it's Robbie Reyes, but they also acknowledge that Johnny Blaze does exist in this universe. You know, who knows? Maybe he'll show up and he'll be fucking Nicolas Cage. And they'll be like, yeah, those movies are now canon. Retroactively. That'd be pretty cool. <laughs> Honestly, no, it wouldn't be cool. Like, I mean, I would love to see Nick Cage in the MCU, but those movies aren't good. I'd rather see Nick Cage in good, uh, good Ghost Rider movies. Maybe one day that'll happen. But yeah, uh, let's see. 2016 was the year that I started watching Steven Universe. And that show was phenomenal. I'm so glad I started watching it, finally. I really wish Hulu would have more episodes so I could watch it legally, you know, more easily. Because, you know, I can't really watch the whole thing legally. Uh, there's not even fucking Blu-ray sets or anything for me to buy. Australia's got Blu-ray sets. I know, because Gabby bought it. You lucky bitch. So, yeah. You know, one day, hopefully, I'll get a chance to watch it legally. Until then, I I'm I'm guess I'm just stuck pirating the fuck out of it, which I don't like doing. But, hey, you leave me no fucking options. What do you expect's going to happen? And, you know, that, that's kind of like the shows I've been watching last year. As for shows I didn't watch that I really wanted to, first off, the new Voltron animated series looks fucking awesome. Haven't gotten around seeing it. And uh, Stranger Things also is another one that looks Fucking awesome, and I haven't gotten around to seeing it. Don't know why I didn't watch them. They're on Netflix. I can watch them whatever the hell I want. I just didn't do it. I watched all of Fuller House, though. Both seasons. Been to watch the fuck out of that. <laughs> but for some reason, I didn't watch the two probably better shows. Fuller House, Fuller House is good, though. I mean, like, I can't help it. It's, it's nostalgic. It, it gives me that kind of warm 90s sitcom feeling that I just... It, it just brings you back to that simpler, nicer time. I liked it, okay? I like Fuller House. I'm not going to feel bad for it. Also, Jodie Sweetin, she's super fucking hot and has amazing tits. God damn it. Like, good lord. Stephanie Tanner fucking grew up, son. Mmm! But yeah, Fuller House. <laughs> I, I liked it. Hopefully I'll get the... Like, I really need to watch Stranger Things and Voltron, though, before, like, the new seasons drop. I'm assuming Stranger Things is going to get another season. It's way too popular not to. And Voltron's new season starts this month, so I need to fucking watch it before the new season starts. God damn it. Anime! I barely watched any! I watched Erased. I thought Erased was pretty good. I liked it. Some people hate it. Some people loved it. I was kind of in the middle. I liked it. It was, in, it was enjoyable. Uh, but that's, then I, that's all I fucking watched! Like, that fucking Dragon Ball Super and Super... It's not good! Like, I'm just watching it because I'm nostalgic and it, it makes me money on the side. But mostly because I'm a nostalgia fag and I just, I can't stop watching it. Fuck. Like, I really need to go watch better anime. And talk about better anime. Ah. But, you know, like, that's, that's, that's just, you know, like, it's a new year. It's a new year. I can, I... I have plenty of animes to watch. Hopefully I'll get to see Mobs Like I 100 like I wanted. I'll get to watch fucking My Hero Academia like I wanted. I'll get to watch all those cool shows. Fucking Yuri on Ice looks awesome. Fucking Kids Night Ever looked great. Uh, Space Patrol Lulu Co Co looks fucking great. All these great fucking animes that came out that I was really interested in. I didn't watch any of them. God damn it. And while well, I'm on the topic of things that I didn't really fucking watch, how about movies? You know, like, I watched a bunch of movies this year, but there's also a lot of movies that I really wanted to see that just... Flew under my radar, I didn't get to see them, and now I'm like, ah, oh, I wish I'd known about that while I was in theaters. Damn it. Like, um, and there, there, there's four in particular I really, really want to see that I missed out on. Um, Green Room, The Neon Demon, Arrival, and The Nice Guys. <clears throat> really, it's just a matter of, like, like, a lot of those movies flew under my radar. Arrival, I think it's, I think it might actually still be in theaters. Now, that one necessarily didn't fly under my radar. I just didn't have anyone to go see it with. So I just didn't get a chance to watch it. So I guess I'm going to have to wait for Blu-ray on that one. But it looks amazing. I've heard nothing but great things about it. Hopefully 
it's as hopefully all these movies are as good as what I've been hearing about them because I really want to see like all of those. As for movies I did see, let's start with horror films. If you are a fan of horror movies, 2016 was a great fucking year at the theaters for you. Um, first off, uh, probably a polarizing one that I saw that I really enjoyed and my friend really enjoyed that I go see horror movies with uh, was The Boy. I thought it was good. I thought it had a, a, a good, smart protagonist, which I always really appreciate in a horror movie. No one was being fucking retarded. It... <clears throat> It was really atmospheric. It had one really shitty jump scare. It's the one in the trailer. And it made me think that movie was going to be garbage. And I saw it anyhow. And it was the only jump scare. Or at least it was the only terrible jump scare. Like the really the schlock moment. It felt like it was just there to put in the trailer. And the movie ended up being pretty good. I liked it. I liked the plot twist. Apparently some people were also thrown off by the plot twist. I liked it. I thought it was a good rock solid horror movie. And a good way to start off my horror movie watching sessions of 2016 because really it just got way better from there because like the boy falls in that category of that was a good horror movie it's not going to be like dude you need to go fucking see the boy it was a good horror movie I liked it now the rest of these though fall to the category of dude you need to go see blank horror movie because it was the shit um <clears throat> first off The Witch Ooh, man that movie was fucking unsettling um, really goddamn, just like, like, shakes you to the core, kind of fucking unsettling. And, uh, it isn't even the fucking witch that's the scariest part of that movie. It's the crazy fucking puritanical Christians that are the scary part of that fucking movie. Goddamn. Like, like, you know, and, like, like, I, I, I am a staunch atheist, so crazy fucking Christians kind of already scare me a little, so... Which is weird, because I've kind of... Because like my last two girlfriends are crazy Christians. I need... Maybe, maybe that's just my way of facing my fears. Maybe that's where that's that's what I'm doing there, and not just making poor life choices. Anyhow, though, The Witch, though, the Christians were fucking terrifying in that movie. They were, like, the most terrifying fucking part of it. Um, and just... It really just kind of highlights just how, like, you know, when, when, when you kind of wrap yourself into that, into, like, that kind of fucking belief system, just how far down the rabbit hole goes and just how fucked up of a person you can become uh, become from it. Great fucking movie. Love The Witch. The Conjuring 2, love that as well. Thought The Conjuring was pretty damn good. Didn't like it as much as Insidious, but I thought it was a great throwback to those kind of old atmospheric horror movies. Here, James Wan finds that middle ground between... Like, you know, like the old world, uh, like horror films, you know, that kind of, you know, subtle aesthetic. And then just, but then like, he just brings in those crazier elements that like Insidious would have. And it was fucking great. And probably James Wan's best film. I loved it. It was, like, I fucking love James Wan. He's my favorite fucking horror movie director. Because no matter what, like, you know, he may not make like my favorite horror movies, but like, like, or, or, but, man, he just makes such good ones, and I'm never disappointed by James Wan's films. I love them. So, Conjuring 2, fucking great. While I'm on the topic of sequels, 10 Cloverfield Lane. I love the original Cloverfield. I thought it was, oh my god, it was probably my favorite fucking movie of that year. Such a great movie. A great new twist on the found footage genre. You know, making it about a giant fucking monster. And honestly, like, that was like the, like the giant kaiju movie I'd always been fucking waiting for. It was so good. So when I heard that there was a sequel, I was psyched. And then I heard that it was a spiritual sequel and not actually a sequel. And I was just like, oh, hmm. I'm still going to watch it. And I did. And oh my god, John Goodman is fucking terrifying. Just, that movie was intense. It was visceral. It was unsettling. And... Like, God, like, like it was unsettling in kind of like the same way like The Witch was unsettling, where it's just, you know, like, people were sitting, like, like in an enclosed space, and you're just really uncomfortable because some people in this room are not fucking all there, and it's just, it was good. Fucking love Ten Cloverfield Lane. John Goodman was terrifying. Thought the ending went a little too Hollywood there at the end. Could have done without that. Um, like, 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 I like the twist. Like, you know, like, when it just, like, this is what had happened. And I'm like, oh, shit. But I feel like it went a little too action-packed, a little too Hollywood. But, um, it was, it was solid. Or, the ending was still solid. 
And it doesn't diminish what was a fantastic movie up until that point. Love 10 Cloverfield Lane. Another one I loved, Lights Out. Probably the most creative horror movie I had seen that year. In terms of just its, its pure concept. And its concept was used really well. Um, the scares were great. The, like, the, the emotional elements of the film were great. The characters were great. Um, it took, like, like, you know, like, the, the main character's shitty boyfriend trope and made him, like, best boyfriend. And, like, because the movie begins, I was just like, ah, it's the shitty boyfriend. Great, I hope he gets killed off soon. And, no, he ended up being, like, one of the best characters in the movie. And then by the end of the movie, I'm like, come on, come on, boyfriend guy, make it to the end of the movie. You can do it. It was, it was good. I loved it. Such a great movie. Lights Out was fucking fantastic. So yeah, if you're a horror fan, it was a great fucking year at the movies. I'm pretty sure there was some stinkers this year. I'm pretty sure Blair Witch is probably fucking garbage. Didn't see it. Don't know. I assumed it was garbage. Didn't even, like, put it on my radar. So fuck it. As for non-horror movies, <clears throat> there was a bunch that came out this year. Didn't watch a whole lot of, like, beyond, like, horror movies and, like, the big summer blockbusters comic book affair. I didn't really watch a whole lot, but... The ones I did were pretty, 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 pretty good. <clears throat> there was a uh, Zootopia. Um, looked like kind of like this kind of furry pandering thing. Didn't really want to watch it. Heard a lot of good things about it, and I was just like, "Well, you know, it's Disney. I mean, I like Tangled. I loved Frozen. I loved uh, Wreck It Ralph. So I should probably give this a shot too." Glad I did because Zootopia ended up being fantastic. Great kids movie. Had a great message. Loved it. Sausage Party. So while we're on the uh, while we're, while we're on the topic of animated films that have messages, uh, Sausage Party better than I expected. I enjoyed watching it. Don't think I'll ever see it again. I appreciate that I at least tried to have a message and tried to be something a little bit more. But <clears throat> overall, it was it was okay. I laughed a few times. Overall enjoyable. Weird food orgy at the end was just, it just kept going and going and going. And I was just like, oh my god. So yeah, that was fun. It was alright. Like I said, probably never watch it again though. But it was at least worth a viewing. Um, another movie I watched this year, I'm cheating. It came out last year, but it didn't hit the States until this year. And by this year, I mean last year because it's 2017. It's I have probably been fucking that up this entire video. You don't need to co correct me in the comments. I'm realizing it now. Um, <clears throat> and I'm probably going to continue to fuck it up throughout this video. So if it bothers you and you're triggered, I'm sorry. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, Boy and the Beast came out 2015 in Japan. Came out 2016 uh, this in, uh, in America. And loved it. I love Mamoru Hosoda. I think he's a great fucking director. I love... Uh, all of his movies, or at least like you know, from the girl who left through time onward, like you know his core catalog of films. I would say the Boy and the Beast is his worst movie, but this is Mamoru Hosoda. Like the the man could take a shit, and it would come out in the form of like the Statue of David, and smell like roses, and taste like cotton candy, because it's Mamoru Hosoda. I don't think he can make bad things. So even though it's like his worst film, it's still like a really good movie so I like I loved it it was just another fantastic film if you've not seen it I really recommend you go check it out uh, and then check out the rest of those films The Girl Who Loved Their Time The Summer Wars and Wolf Children they are all fan, uh, fantastic films phenomenal movies bring the feels I love them really wish people would stop calling him the next uh, Hayao Miyazaki because his films are nothing like Miyazaki's but whatever Great fucking director. Go watch his movies. Go see The Boy and the Beast. Or go watch it. Great movie. And while I'm on the topic of great movies, Star Trek Beyond. Holy shit, guys. Like, the first Star Trek I thought was serviceable. It was okay. It established what it needed to for, like, a new Star Wars universe to introduce people to get the slobbering masses into the theaters to go watch a fucking Star Trek movie. It did what it needed to to be the first movie in a series and to set the stage for better movies. And then Into Darkness came out and it was fucking garbage. Well, like, well I guess I'm not watching any more of these fucking Star Trek movies. They've, you know, they're, they're clearly not going to make the movies that I wanted to see. So, fuck it. And then Star Trek Beyond comes out and it's fucking amazing! Oh my god! Like, I wasn't going to see this movie. I wasn't going to watch this movie ever. But then all these people that, like, I respect 
are telling me that it's great. You know, I'm watching all these reviews from people. It's like, no, it's a great movie. It's a good Star Trek movie. They made a good Star Trek movie again, finally. Like a Star Trek movie that understands what Star Trek is supposed to fucking be. Is it my favorite Star Trek movie of all time? No, because it's not Undiscovered Country. Wait, no. Wait, shit. Yeah, Undiscovered Country was six. Shit, The Voyage Home. I love Undiscovered Country too, but The Voyage Home. There we go. It's not The Voyage Home, and it's not Undiscovered Country, so it can't be my favorite Star Trek movie. But, god damn it. It was, it was good. I was so glad I eventually ended up watching that. Um, I'm really glad I didn't just shuffle that off into the side and just pretend it never fucking existed. Because, god damn it, that movie was fucking good. A Starzy movie that wasn't so good? Rogue One. Yeah, Rogue One. Um, it exists. I did a whole fucking video of it with Dr. Agro. It's okay. And that's all I can say. It was... It exists. It's it's got some kind of meh moments. It's got some kind of yeah moments. Overall, it's just kind of it's all right. You know, it wasn't all right though. I probably should have included this. Like as far as like all the terrible things that happened in 2016, um, the worst by far, worse than the shooting of Harambe, worse than Brexit, worse than this fucking horrible election that we had. Worse than, you know, Carrie Fisher dying. The movie that shall not be named came out, came out the, uh, that year. And it was the worst fucking movie I've ever seen. I hated it. It was fucking garbage. I already talked about it for 90 minutes. I don't need to fucking tell you why it's fucking garbage. Because I already told you why it's fucking garbage. And it was the worst fucking movie I've ever fucking seen. It was... But then, by association, also makes it the worst fucking movie of 2016. I fucking... I just... I hated... I hated that movie. So much, people. You don't fucking understand. Um, but you know what? There were good comic book movies that came out this year. Uh, specifically, uh, Doctor Strange was fantastic. Marvel really just got... They, they've got their origin story formula boiled down to a science. But um, really, though, it was... like Doctor Strange was fucking fantastic. They gave you this lead, who was a total fucking prick, and... Then something terrible happens to him, and it's like, good, fucker deserves it. And then he's still a prick, and then they build him back up and really make you like the guy by the end of the movie. And that's really impressive. Like, to take a character who's such a fucking utter shitbag, an unlikable motherfucker, and then redeem him. And, like, make him the proper hero of a story, and be like, yeah, that movie was great. And the ending. Like, it's big glowy thing in the sky ending that all these fucking superhero movies keep doing, but... It, it it did something completely different than what I was expecting. I mean, you're kind of saying like, oh, well, big Lloyd thing in the sky, fight the bad guys, maybe use the time spell to like close the hole, beat the bad guys, fight them, and then movie over. No, it did something completely different, something really creative, and something that really tied back into the themes of the film. And the film had themes, which is something I also really appreciate. The movie dealt with uh, time and healing, and that was this reoccurring thing throughout the film. And I thought it, that that ending really tied back into those themes. I thought it was a great movie. One of uh, the better films of the Marvel catalog. Definitely of the MCU. Loved it. It was, it was a great movie. Another one that was fucking fantastic. Deadpool. Fucking rocked. Um, yes, more of those, please. Can we get some more of that? Because that was fucking great. I love Deadpool. Um, hopefully this opens up more blockbuster R-rated films. Because we don't really get those anymore. I want to see more um, R-rated blockbuster films. Please. Please. Uh, but please don't make them. But also, though, don't make... just Don't just slap an R-rating on anything. Just because it worked for Deadpool. Don't make, like, another... Like, like the movie that shall not be named did not need an R-rated fucking extended cut. It needed, a, it needed a cut that made fucking sense. But it didn't need a fucking R-rated version. Um... Other superhero movies don't need R-rated versions. Logan, Wolverine, he needs an R-rated film. So I'm glad Logan's going to be R-rated. So I'm looking forward to that. And hopefully that movie's great. Hopefully X-23 is awesome. I love X-23. I love Laura slash the new Wolverine. So I'm really looking forward to, you know, what they do there. Hopefully that movie doesn't suck. <laughs> I'm really hoping that movie doesn't suck. Because I want a great Wolverine movie. Because... You know, Origins, not good. Um, the Wolverine, 
Passable, Logan, come on. Like, you know, nail it with Logan, guys. I have faith in you. Let's let's do this. So, yeah. Um, on to some comic movies that weren't so good, but I thought were fine. Suicide Squad. I already talked about it at length. It's a clusterfuck of a movie. It's loud and in your face. It's obnoxious. It's disjointed. But honestly, so are the Suicide Squad themselves. So I think thematically that works. And I'm probably the only person on the planet who will say that. And I like Suicide Squad. It's not a good movie. I enjoyed it. Same thing can be said for the new Ninja Turtle movie. Out of the Shadows. <coughs> I'm probably like the only person who thinks this is actually worse than the last Ninja Turtle movie. I feel like all the people that are saying that this one was better, it's just there are a bunch of people who are really nostalgic for the 87 cartoon and they're like, man, I want Bebop and Rocksteady and Crane to fucking show up in one of these movies, make it a real Ninja Turtle movie. And because they're there, it's like it feels more like a Ninja Turtle movie to them. And honestly, like, I mean, those elements are there and it's nice to have them. I don't think it's as well made of a movie. I don't think it's as interesting of a movie. And I, I think it's a bit more flawed and a little bit more boring, oddly enough. Uh, I still enjoyed it. It was an entertaining movie. I can't say I wasn't entertained. Uh, but, I mean, you slap Ninja Turtles on anything, and I'm... There's a good chance it's going to be entertained. I am extremely biased. Horribly, horribly fucking biased. I can fucking admit that shit. But, um... Even with this, though, it was alright. You know, I was hoping it was going to be legitimately good, because that's how a lot of people were making it sound. And it just ended up being, eh, alright. Same thing with X-Men Apocalypse. Apparently a lot of people fucking despise this movie. I thought it was fine. I mean, it's not as good as Days of Future Past, or First Class, or um, uh, X2, or... Uh, I guess it's probably on, on par, maybe like the first X-Men movie. Like, it's got some great parts, it's got some bad parts to it. Really, it's bad parts come from just the underdevelopment of a lot of characters and a needlessly tacked on Wolverine scene. But overall, I thought X-Men Apocalypse was fine. It was an enjoyable watch. Um, and I, I always enjoyed the X-Men movies. Honestly, I have not seen an X-Men movie that I've actively disliked. Yes, even 3 and X-Men Origins Wolverine, I'm not saying they're good movies, I still enjoy them, you know. So yeah, like this kind of just goes with that pile of, I like the X-Men movies, and I kind of like this never-ending continuity they have, and I'm fine with it never going back to Marvel, honestly. Really, I mean, what the hell can Marvel do at this point? Like, the X-Men doesn't won't even work in that universe. Like, it, they do not work in the MCU at all. So let's not even fucking pretend. Now for my top five movies of the year. These are like my favorite, like the ones that just kick the most ass for me. Uh, first off, Don't Breathe. Notice that it wasn't in my horror movie list. That's because I was saving it for this. Uh, great use of space. Great use of just sound design. Um, fucking just a great fucking concept. It was genuinely unsettling. Really intense. Really fucking scary. I fucking love that movie. Um... I, yeah, it was just, it was my favorite horror movie of uh, this year. Lights Out was like a really close second, but like this one really kind of edged it out as just like, because like Lights Out was a more creative concept in terms of just the idea that they were working with, but Don't Breathe, like I love just how simple of a concept it was. And it's one that I've never seen before. And just, oh man, good fucking movie. Just loved it. Fucking fantastic. Another one that was fantastic, Hardcore Henry. Best fucking movie of 2016 that nobody fucking watched. Actually, that's not true. There's another one on this list that's going to be that, that's going to have that honor. But one of the best movies of last year, nobody fucking watched it. And then a bunch of people who did watch it didn't fucking get or appreciate the movie. So fuck those Philistines. That was a great fucking movie. If you don't know which one I'm talking about, if you don't know what the fuck Hardcore Henry is, it's that first person action movie. It looks like a video game. That's because it's trying to be a video game. Like, people don't seem to really get. Like, and people always talk about that like it's a negative. It's just like, oh, it's trying to... It, it just feels very video gamey. It's like, oh, congratulations. You identified what this thing was trying to be. 
Congrats. That's like saying like, oh, the Star Wars movies are just kind of like, 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 you know, trying to be like these old sci. Feels like it's trying to be like an old sci-fi serial. It's like, well, congratulations. You know what the fuck Star Wars is trying to be. You know, like you know, like pointing out what the movie's trying to be, and is not a negative critique on the fucking movie itself. You dumb fucks. So yeah, that movie was fucking phenomenal. I loved it. One of the best fucking action movies uh, of last year. And I just... So god damn good. Like, go fucking see Hardcore Henry if you haven't seen it. Um, if you suffer from motion sickness, maybe that's a good reason to not watch it. But other than that, like, go fucking see Hardcore Henry. It was so fucking good. Best fucking movie <laughs> like that I had seen. Or one of the best fucking movies I had seen last year. Fucking phenomenal. Go watch it if you haven't yet. And even if you have watched it, go watch it again. It's a great movie. Civil War. Notice the Civil War I didn't mention that while I was talking about comic movies because Civil War, once again, oh my god, one of my favorite fucking comic book movies, uh, my favorite movie of the MCU so far. Uh, just, like, I really had trouble deciding if I was going to, like, if I liked this more than The Winter Soldier because The Winter Soldier was so fucking good. And this one was just as good. Like, it has, like, like a little bit of a pacing issue, but it's so dense in content and ideas, and it really just highlights how well this concept can be done. Specifically, the two heroes fighting each other concept, because, you know, the movie that shall not be named did it, and that's a beautiful fucking example of doing it wrong and doing it right. And just, oh my god, I was, like, my expectations for Civil War were sky high, and I was so worried it was going to be bad. Like, I was going to watch it. It was going to be this disjointed clusterfuck. They weren't going to be able to, to, like, make all the elements function. Like, they weren't going to be able to introduce Spider-Man and um, Black Panther and the conflict between um, Tony Stark and um, uh, Steve Rogers. And they weren't going to be able to, like, introduce, like, you know, Baron Zemo or Zemo, like, you know, as, like, the antagonist and tie all that, and then tie in all the Winter Soldier shit, too. I was just like, how are you going to do this? And they did it. And honestly, I'd say right now, like, I mean, I actually enjoy the Civil War comic quite a bit. This was better than the comic. Like, you know, this is one of those things where people need to, like, because people will be like, oh, like, they didn't include this thing from the comic and this thing from the comic. It's like, shut the fuck up, alright? Like, and, you know, fidelity doesn't equal quality, and this is a good, great fucking example of deviating from the source material for the better. And it was a great fucking movie. I already talked about it at length with Agro. It's a great movie. <clears throat> Another great one. And this is the actual best movie that nobody fucking saw. Kubo in the Two Strings. I love Lycus films. Like, you know, Coraline, I loved it. Fucking uh, Paranorman, I think, is one of the best fucking children's movies ever made. Box Trolls, I thought was really good, too. And then fucking Kubo comes along, and I'm just like, it is visually fucking gorgeous. It is heartwarming. It has a great fucking story and great characters. And just, like, it's really hard to say if it's better than Paranorman. Because, like, I think they're both phenomenal films. But at the same time, the mere fact that I could even say, like, is this better than Paranorman? Or, I don't know. Like, the mere fact that I could even have that debate with myself just says how great of a fucking movie Kubo is. Because, god damn it. Kubo and Two Strings, if you have not fucking seen it. If you aren't watching Laika's films, you're not watching the best fucking movies that are, like, that are coming out, really. Like, because, god damn it, fucking just... Like, that movie was... When I saw it, I was just like, this is my favorite movie of the year. Boom. That's it. Like, nothing is going to top this movie. Like, it, the, the, that is it. It is the best movie of this year. And then Shin Godzilla came out, and Shin Godzilla was fucking amazing. Oh my god. After being horribly disappointed by the 2014 Godzilla film that Gareth Edwards, that fucking hack, made, um, <clears throat> that everyone seemed to fucking love, except for, like, me and, like, three of my friends. Like, everyone else seemed to fucking love that movie. I hated it. But here I had a Godzilla movie that I loved. And that all of my friends loved. Like, like we saw that movie, we were like, that. That was how you do... That's how you do a fucking Godzilla movie now. 
And also, that's how you do an Evangelion movie. You want to ever, ever curious how Evangelion would work in live action? There you go. There's your template right there. It's, it's, oh my god. Shin Godzilla was such a good fucking movie. Uh, Aragro and I spent probably like 40-something minutes, maybe even close to an hour talking about it. I don't fucking remember. We talked about it for a long time. If you want to know exactly why I think Shin Godzilla is so fucking great, go watch that. Or, you know, just wait for it to eventually fucking come out on Blu-ray. Hopefully that's not too far, that's too, not, not too long of a wait. Because that's a movie that I really feel that more people need to see. Because Shin Godzilla was so, so, so goddamn good. It's exactly what I wanted from a Godzilla movie. It's exactly what I want from just like a well-crafted monster movie. Or like a giant kaiju film like this. Um, it's definitely like my favorite movie of its kind I've seen since Cloverfield. Because, like, I thought Chlorophyll was great, and then, you know, we didn't really get a lot of kaiju films. I mean, like, Japan's maybe been making them, and I haven't been seeing them. Maybe that's what was going on. But, like, you know, uh, I thought Pacific Rim was good, but not as good as this. And I thought Godzilla was fucking terrible. So, like, seeing Shin Godzilla and seeing it really... Seeing Ano just knock it out of the fucking park was fantastic. And it was... Hands down, my favorite fucking movie of 2016. And I I just can't wait for that movie to come out on Blu-ray so I can watch it again. It was, like, that movie was worth a two-hour drive to go fucking watch. I loved it from beginning to end. Favorite fucking movie of 2016. And that covers movies, uh, games... I don't play a lot of video games. Unfortunately, I love video games. I just don't make the time for them, especially console games. I don't do console games well. Like, you know, a console game comes out, and, like, maybe I'll buy it, and I'll play a little bit of it, and I I have an issue with just sitting in front of just, you know... Like, I, I like playing console games. I just don't have the time for them. So, uh, a lot of games I just didn't really get a chance to play this year. In fact, there's only two games that I'll show you right now. Gravity Rush... Which was a port of a Vita game for the PS4, which is getting a sequel later this month. Can't wait for that. Game is good. Um, leaves a lot of unanswered questions. It's a fucking incomplete game, which is why I'm looking forward to the sequel. Um, like, and hopefully the sequel will be just as good as this one, and we'll wrap up all the fucking loose bullshit from this one, and I'll get a full gaming experience between these two games. But yeah, Gravity Rush, fucking great game. Loved it. Wish I had a fucking proper ending, but up until then, I thought it was, like, the greatest thing ever, and then it didn't fucking end properly, and I was just like, I need that sequel to come out. And, of course, uh, I've been tweeting about it and talking about it, fucking Pokemon Moon. Um, I plan on doing a video in the near future talking about this game again. Uh, loved it. Probably my favorite Pokemon game of the entire fucking franchise. So, so good. And those are really, like, the only two games I really played, uh, like, all the way from beginning to end and played a shit ton of. And I know people are thinking it, but see on. what about the Dragon Ball games? We had two really good Dragon Ball games come out this year, didn't we? And I'm sure we did. And it's like, come on, man, you, like, rolled, like, the, the Xenoverse hype train and you were, like, tweeting about fusions a shit ton. What happened? And, okay, so... I have both of them. I do. I bought them. Look, I even have the day one dish. That way you know, like, I bought it, like, right when it first came out. So, yeah, I bought these games, like, as soon as they came out. It's just... Hey. This came out, and I started playing it, and I got bored by the beginning. If you want to know what happened. The beginning of this game was slow as shit, and I don't fucking like how it was dragging me from, like... Go over here and talk to this fucker. Go over here and talk to this fucker. Go over here and talk to this fucker. Now go do this thing. Now go have, like, a fucking tutorial fight. Now come back and do this shit. Now go over to this this shit. And then go... It's boring. I fucking hate when goddamn games... Like, it's this fucking thing with, like, it's this fucking modern gaming trend. Like, like let's just fucking drag at the beginning and... Like, and did fucking Canton City need to be this massive fucking hub world? Like, I understand, like, it's a fucking MMO-type experience... Do I need that in this fucking game? Like, I didn't really like running around in the first game. And not like, we made Kanton City. It's even bigger than Toki Toki City. And I'm like, I didn't like running around fucking Toki Toki City. That was the worst fucking part of fucking Xenoverse 1. And I ain't gonna give me a fucking bigger city to fucking run around in it. And like, like, oh, you can't fly yet. It's like, 
Why? Because we said so arbitrarily. Fuck you. Like, do not put a barrier between me and the game. Like, fuck that. Yes, I still want to fucking play Xenoverse 2. I want to get to the part where the game is actually fucking fun. But I fucking can't stand when games put this bullshit barrier between me and my entertainment. Like, you made this game. Here's the fun part of the game. Oh, well, we're not going to let you have the fun part of the game just yet. We're going to, we're going to, like, hold you back and just, you know, like, keep you from getting to it just yet. Like, fucking Pokemon had that problem, too. And that's one of my big criticisms of that game, and I'll get onto that in another video in the future. But, yeah, like, I thought it was way more boring and way more egregious in fucking Xenoverse 2. I was fucking bored out of my mind at the beginning of that game. And I just wanted to fucking get to the story and play the game. And so yeah, I've, I've barely played any of it, really. I just got fucking frustrated and annoyed. I'm probably like this far away from when the actual game starts. But I was so pissed off and annoyed. I was just like, fuck it. I'm not going to fucking play this game on your terms, fuckers. And then uh, the other one, Dragon Ball Fusions. Uh, honestly, this game excited me way more than Xenoverse 2 did. Like, I, I liked Xenoverse 1. That's why I was excited for Xenoverse 2. Um, this, uh, this was something completely new. I always really liked portable Dragon Ball games. They're always the more interesting games. I feel like they get to be more experimental and fun with those and try new things. And I just, I, I didn't fucking play it because it came out two days after Pokemon. And I had priorities, bitch. And unfortunately, the new Pokemon game is so good, it's got like a grip hold on my balls, I won't stop playing it. Like, I tried to put it down, I played some of this, and I was just like, It's not Pokemon! I need, I, no, I'm sorry! <laughs> Pokemon, 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 Pokemon! I couldn't, I couldn't put it down. Oh my god, I have a problem, guys. I need, I need Poke Rehab. Like, like I just like I just I think like another fucking hit of Pokemon. Just, just, just one more. Just, just one more hour. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, new Pokemon game was <laughs> really good, and it's keeping me from playing other things that I really want to play. Damn it. Uh, and that was basically 2016 for me in a nutshell. Um, so now we're moving on to the future and the future of this channel and where it's going. And if you've actually stayed to this part of the video, well, congratulations. You get to know all the stuff. Some of the stuff I've mentioned before. Some of the stuff I am mentioning probably for, like, the first time. I don't know. Maybe. I don't remember. I can't remember everything I say. I say a lot of shit. Okay? My life is just one blur of fucking things I say. Like, I don't even remember half of it half the time. Anyhow. So, the future of this channel. What am I doing? What, what is the plan here? As I've said before, I'm cutting back on vlog-based videos. I'm going to do a lot more podcasty type things. Um, Dragon Ball Super reviews are going to be spaced out more, and I'm going to be putting multiple episodes uh, reviews into one video. Uh, I really need to do that fucking hit filler thing because I have yet to record that. Maybe that'll come out before this. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. It'll probably end up coming out before this. But as of this recording, I have yet to fucking record the those hit episodes. Uh, the review for those. But anyhow. So yeah, that's going to be kind of where, like, where the content on this channel goes. And then I'm going to be doing um, my other channel. Um, don't ask about it, guys. Like, I'll announce it when it's ready to be announced. Um, I have plans for it. And 2017 will be the year that that channel, like, takes off. And I start working on content for it. I'm going to be focusing on content for it. Uh, the content for it will be... Um, deconstructive videos, fully scripted and edited, and they're going to be just deconstructive videos on different topics. Sometimes, like, a lot of it's going to be, um, anime and, like, kind of weeby shit, so it's going to be, it's going to be called Death Sections, as in, like, Desu, you know, Death Sections, uh, and then Destructions, whatever, I'm just completely tearing into something. And... That's going to be, like, a lot of content for that. The first death sections are going to be uh, Dragon Ball related. Uh, the first one is going to be uh, a deconstruction of the uh, Beers arc of Dragon Ball Super. Something that I've been talking about doing for a while. 
And I'm gonna try and time that when, um, with the, cause like the dub is about to come out, so I wanna strike that iron while it's hot. That will be a good time to put this out. So I'm gonna put that out around that time, along with uh, a video that'll follow it up called, What If the Beers Arc Didn't Suck? Or What If the Battle of Gods Arc Didn't Suck? In Dragon Ball Super. You know, so that's gonna be the second death section. That's something I've been kicking around for a while. It's fully scripted. I've had it sitting around. I just need to record and edit it. But I want it to come out after I do the deconstruction video. So that way people understand why these fixes I'm making. Like why I'm making these fixes. And then, you know, and then you have, you know, like, you know. Like you had the, the deconstructive video explaining, like, these are the issues. And then the, the what if it didn't suck. And then, like, me fixing all of those fixes. And just kind of doing this what if scenario. Uh, like, how I would fix uh, the arcs of Dragon Ball Super. Like, you know, to make them better, more competent arcs. You know, you know using smug hindsight and whatnot. So, uh, that's going to be, like, the bulk of the content. And it's not just going to be Dragon Ball, obviously. Just, like, the first two videos are going to be Dragon Ball. And I'm going to go back to Dragon Ball Super, trying to time it up with the English dub releases of certain arcs. That's going to be a thing. But I'm also going to be talking about uh, movies um, and uh, different animes, uh, video games, just different things. And I'm going to be doing deconstructive videos on a lot of different topics. There's a lot of things that I want to talk about, things I love, things I hate, explaining why I hate them or why I love them, and, um, yeah. So that's going to be the future content for that channel. Also, uh, for those that know about my TIBA submission that I worked on, that got absolutely no place hell whatsoever in Team 4 Stars list, but whatever, I'm not bitter at all. Um, I do plan on going back to it. I plan on releasing a kind of like a a remastered version of the first episode. I'm going to rewrite some of the things I didn't like in that first episode because I was really time constrained to like write and knock out an episode, uh, write and knock it out and record it and um, get that finished in that month. And plus, my fucking computer was dead for a week, so that was rough. Uh, so um, hopefully, this like that I'm going to be picking that back up and doing that again. So and I'm also going to be announcing uh, a Patreon. So if people want to support me. Like honestly, guys, like, like seriously, like just like a dollar would be, would would be more than enough. Because if like if like if like everyone gave a dollar, I'd never have to fucking work again. I could just make awesome fucking videos for people. It'd be the shit. But yeah, Patreon is something I'm going to be doing in the future. Um, but I want to have good content to show for it first. I don't want to just hey guys. Make me give give me money and I'll start making good videos. No, I want to make good videos as a proof of concept. Look, guys, I can make good videos. I can make them more often if I had a Patreon, and I didn't have to work a real job as often. And so that'll be the that that'll be you know my goal for that. Also, I'm I'm interested to see how many of you guys will actually follow me to this new channel because I have a feeling like once I start making this new content. A lot of people aren't going to follow over. I'm assuming a few thousand. Like, I got to be like 11,000. I'm assuming like maybe two to 3,000 will actually port over within that first week or so for those first couple of videos. Um, everyone else, though, I have a feeling will probably... Because like, uh, yeah, I, I, I pay attention to my views. I know what people are watching and what they're not. So, you know, like usually like my average video, like even if it's not Dragon Ball related... Gets about five thousand views, so I'm assuming like three thousand will take will be even bothered in that first week to port over. But we'll see. We'll see what the future holds for me. Um, I'm kind of excited to see where things go. Hopefully, um, like I don't crash and burn. <laughs> That's uh, fingers crossed on that, guys. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see how this year goes for me. And until then, guys. Uh, Hope you guys had a good uh, New Year's, and uh, hopefully this new year will be good. So yeah, till next time, Xeon, out.